right? So how do you um, how, how do you get them to how do you get them to understand the concept of moderation at the same time as letting them have their fun? Well, it comes down to the house, right? It comes down to the the first the, the, the original institute, which is the house, the family. Um, you know what you pick up from friends, having mentors around. You know, those are steps I think people should take. Mm. And uh, w one question, I guess, that we can slide into uh, quite easily from uh, f from this discussion is: Do you think the uh, the role of Afrocentric schools, uh, specifically with regards to music? I mean, you can study the history of black black music, black folklore. Uh, do you think that that would help make kids more aware of uh, of the history that has gone into their music and the music as an expression of their people's experience? Um, I think there's a gray area with that. I think you can actually do a lot of independent learning and, you know, if, if once you're around certain people and having black mentors, that's, that's another way of dealing with it. I think it takes away from the um, amalgamation of various ethnic groups as opposed to just having a single entity. I think what's um, dangerous is that you look look at the other um, ethical backgrounds from um, Hebrew schools to, um, you know, whatever, even, you know, um, denomination schools like Catholic Protestant schools, they already, they already have their, uh, their thing established, their, their curriculum's established. I think for us it's, it'd be like this way of retooling, um, getting the rare resources, it gets a little dangerous, different ways of actually having curriculums work. You know, it's not just that I have to be involved. Um, as long as we've been around, and they've been open to all cultures, an Afrocentric school, do you think that that's important to be open to all cultures as well? I, I think if there's a small Jewish boy who needs to go to a black school to know, know his history, because he might as well, you know, figure out how the world works, that's the way I see it, and that's my own opinion. Um, you need a bit of everything. You, you need to know a little bit about the Maccabee Bible. You need to know a little bit about Hinduism or Buddhism. You need to know a little bit about, you know, um, you know um, the African ways of being from, you know, the way food is made, the way we hunt. You know, it, it, it's endless, man. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you just can't to pick a race um, and just think about it through um, the education and just having just that one way of teaching kids. You know, it's not, you need, you need, you need to know everything. You need to try to touch on a little bit of everything. That's the way I, I've, I've been taught and I think that's, that's cool. Um, learning from um, various sources from feminism, like a, you know, a Jane Rule to a James Baldwin. I think that's also important, mm. you know, n learning a little bit about gay culture, learning a little bit about heterosexual culture, you know, you know what I mean? A bit of everything. A little bit of everything. So, um, it, so um, does that mean we have to screen all the teachers that go through and we have to find out who can actually give our kids the right amount of training? I mean, the education system's already doing that, you know? Um, what we should have is an enriched program. Okay. Where the kids can actually, um, you know, be in, be like, for example, being in school after the, after the um, day in their history classes and then maybe half the day in a black studies program. Okay, so... I'd rather that. Would an Afrocentric school that was only open and only available to black students or students of African descent, would that be counterproductive? If it was limited to only, would that be uh, w w would that be a segregationist attitude? Um, to a certain extent, yeah, and I think it would it would hurt our credibility when it comes for those kids to actually apply to the Harvards and your McGills and you know your Princetons or your Cambridges or Oxfords, you know, because um, we'd be at the bottom once again. It's a cascade system, you know. Um, you how would it? Would you choose a kid from LCC or a kid from the Marcus Garvey School of, of Thought? Mm. See what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, we've got a good mentor, we've got a good teacher, and we definitely have a good role model in you, Andy. 
And uh, maybe you can just uh, quickly uh, tell the people where they can catch uh, the goods, they can, uh, your tour in Jamaica. Uh, where can they get more of uh, more? Okay, of uh, they can go on postart slash po slash start dot com. Um, duct tape, D U C K S D U C K T A P E dot C A. Um, PTR music dot com. I mean, those are the areas, or you can just Google Andy Williams, the goods in quotation, Montreal, and a whole bunch of things will pop up. Okay. Andy Williams, thank you very much for You're talking welcome. with us today. Keep fighting the good fight. Right on. And uh, best of uh, best of sounds. Thank the you. Best of sounds right in Jamaica. On. Cool. Let's see it.